Hello, hello, and welcome to Rory's Brainworks, where we get creative and see if it works. Today, we will be pushing that intro to the test because we will indeed be getting creative and seeing if it works. Now, staying in line with the theme of the last video, the last tutorial, I'm gonna be working with a harness that only utilizes one 30-foot bundle of rope. And I am deep into a very experimental phase of trying out new things. So you could be there a little bit and try and swim through my thought process to get to the place that I get to normally. It is something I'm just now referring to as the gem harness. I had posted it on Instagram not long ago, and some people seemed to like it, so you know what? I decided, sure, let's go for it. It was my experiment. I fiddled around with it just a little bit more, but the basic design is still there, and I think we'll give it a go. I'm gonna teach you. You get the benefit of all my experimentation. Don't they make it sound so weird, Marie? But I would be remiss if I did not bring up safe, sane, and consensual safety. Be sure to have some safety shears with you at all times. You can always get new rope, but you can't get a new life. And consensual. Marie and I are both consenting adults. Communication is key. Before we get started to the tutorial, we must first thank my sponsor, Knothead Nylon. Knothead Nylon is the destination for all your premium nylon rope bondage needs. Easy to clean, water resistant, up to 1,100 pounds of weight load, and in a wide array of beautiful, vibrant colors, Knothead Nylon will slake your rope desires. At checkout, put in discount code RORY10 for 10% off. Now I'm going to take the hitch of my rope and we're going to go around in an oblique angle. I'm mostly doing this because I wanted to show that you don't necessarily have to start out your tie with a horizontal or vertical angle. You can start going in diagonal. Sometimes uh, I specifically did this. I wanted to start out in a diagonal, a, a oblique direction because I wanted to do something different. Create some change. Shake it up and see what I can make based off of that. So in the back, we'll be putting that in to a girth hitch. And so once we have that girth hitch in, we're gonna tighten it up a little bit, trying to stay in constant communication with our model. Murray, how is that pressure? Awesome. This oblique line is gonna go directly underneath the pec or underneath the breast. And you don't want it too entirely tight because we are gonna be doing some weaving in the front. Now my thought process when I got to this part is that I need to make another oblique or diagonal crossing across the chest. And what I should do is put down an anchor because the girth hitch can slip up, especially if I go that way. It's gonna see what happens is it's gonna start pulling it and it'll pull it off. But we can pull down this way. Now it's not gonna give us a lot of tension to hold this as we go around, but it'll give us enough because once we go around and come back, we can then anchor this off. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna go down this way. I'm gonna weave through the front and I'll show you that now. You can see that I have some of that looseness right here and get one to two fingers of width in there. When we come back up, each of these fibers is gonna do an alternating over and under. Once loosely weave through, that's what we got. And then we'll tie it off in the back. So once we come back around, this is essentially what your getup will be looking like right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to cross over this area right here and we're going to wrap around it. And then we're going to cross over these two vertical fibers right here. And once we do that, we're gonna go underneath this one and we're gonna take this loop that was crossing over these fibers and pull it down. We're gonna put ourselves through that loop. And once you tighten that bad boy up, that is what you will get. Now what we're going to do is actually separate these fibers. So we'll go this way and wrap around. So we do these fibers one at a time, just beneath the armpit. Be safe with the axillary space. You don't want to be pushing into the armpit itself. You don't want to be pushing into the arm. You want to push against this area. There is a sack of lymphatics right there, but you should be able to avoid it for the most part, as long as you're not going at more of an upward angle into the armpits here. So we're gonna do our common weave through here. So we'll choose below and over first, and we'll do the same thing over here. So we went under, over, and we gotta go under and over again. This last one, we'll go over and then around, and just do the exact opposite on this way down. You wanna create some tightness up, up top here, and you wanna keep it pushed upwards. You wanna keep it pushed up just above the collarbone if you can. 
just below the nape of the neck. We're gonna do the same thing with this other side. One of the benefits is that we're gonna be going through, weaving through here too. So we're gonna weave through here and weave through this and then weave through that. So we'll do the top fiber, come down, do the bottom fiber. So since we're doing this top fiber first, we have to communicate with the rope that's just above it. So the rope immediately right here is going underneath. So we have to go over. So we're gonna go over, under, over, under, over, under. The rope's gotta communicate. Sometimes you have to be a little intense with your words for rope. Rope respects authority. You are the authority figure in this. So if you're following the normal weaving methods, you got something that's a little bit of a mess like this right now, but all you gotta do is tighten it up and push it up. You gotta remember to keep this pushed up. Now what's gonna happen is we're gonna go around and we're actually gonna take this space and open it up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around. Now once around, we're actually gonna go underneath these crossover. This time we'll be going above it. We're gonna do just a slight smaller weave in this instance. You can go over under and then under over with the other one. Uh, you know, actually, let's do that. Let's make it pretty. Why not? I haven't experimented with that yet. Let's experiment with it. You're experimenting in real time with me. Real time experimentation. I'm glad you're all here for this and you appreciate what I do because I think I am ridiculous. You know, what we're gonna do actually is we're gonna keep it symmetrical with the other side. <laughs> Whoa, I just did something crazy. Oopsies. FYI, I also fail a lot. That's the whole point. Most of the time, I learn something from it. All right, we're gonna tighten that a pretty good amount. Marie, how's that pressure? Is that okay? Awesome. So we'll just kind of do a regular crossover right here and then do the opposite fibers, the opposite weave. You know, I like that. You know, I was gonna do something that was less than optimal. Okay, and then we're gonna wrap around again. So instead of going all the way across into opposite ends, we're just gonna grab the local uh, fibers right here and pull this way. This is where we're gonna start seeing the shape and definition of it. So once again with weaving, our top rope, we gotta do the opposite. It's going under for its first one, so we're going over. Over, under, around, over, under, this way. Under, over, around, under, over, tighten. Now that that's tightened a little bit, what I'm gonna do is fix this up a little bit. Whew, I'm sweating like a whore in church. All right, so we're gonna tighten that up a little bit. We're gonna go back around, do that same cross. As you can see, going in and out of these fibers, weaving through here and then just crossing over ourselves and going back around. Let's go back. We're gonna do the same thing as we did with these ones down here. Opposite, just creating that weave. Cause I love weaves. I'm a slut for weaves, yo. White chocolate and weaving. I'm a slut for these things. Please send me white chocolate to my VO box. Actually don't, my tummy. I mean, my tummy would like it. The rest of me wouldn't because then I gotta work out a lot more. And that's just a pain. I mean, a very delicious pain. Once you got that set up, add a little bit of tightness. Marie, how's that? Is that okay? Awesome, go back around. Now that we've come back around, we got the, the ends of these right here. What I'm gonna do is just finish it. Add a double coin knot. Look at that quick double coin knot. Ugh, there we go. Got that back all finished up. Let's get up a little close with this. So we got our primary back knottage right here. This is where our hitch was. Comes back around. We got that modified knot right there. And then we separated. When we came back around, we weaved in and out of these two fibers that were oblique running. Weaved in and out, crossed, weave in and out. Weave in and out, cross, weave in and out. Finish up, double coin knot, boom. So as you can see from the side, we have this lower oblique strand right here. And what would normally be all of these ones right here, just going underneath it, we instead added that extra panache and to the front. And you can, from the front, you can start to sort of understand why I've been calling it just the gem harness for right now, because these kind of looks like the facets and cuts of a gem. Leaving this space right here open, creating this, uh, what seems to be a pet cage right here. Make these look a little bit more smooth. If you want to do photography with this, you would make everything look a little bit smoother, make everything a little even, symmetrical. There we go. It's kind of creating a pet cage and kind of creating the cut facets of a gem, kind of giving us also the shape of a gem right there, which is why I've just been calling it the gem harness for right now. Well, hey, I hope you enjoyed that rig. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial just as much as I did teaching it to you. Marie seems to be enjoying it quite a bit. She's just off in the distance, staring into a mirror, unmoving, silently staring, adoring herself, which is concerning. You know what? I'll worry about that later. No need to worry about this thing now. Experimentation is so very important for any artistic field. We must push these boundaries safely. Safely. In order to create new and wonderful things, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my other beautiful sponsors. 
the lovely people over at Patreon. That's patreon.com backslash Rory's Brainworks, just like this YouTube channel. They are my rope vanguard, my colonizers of dreams, and without them, these artistic endeavors would be way harder to do. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your time with me. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to this madness, and comment down below what kind of shibari or kambaku things you would like me to teach you. As always, I'm Rory. This is my brain. I'm very certain it works. Be safe and go create some art.